Uh, my name is Kevin Daniels and my company's Fix Hardware and I'm hoping with this series of videos to um, give a bunch of information in regards to bolting, um, hardware choices, what to use, what not to use, um, and share some of my experience over the last 20 years of working with these products. Uh, in 1991, I met some Spaniard, Spaniards, I should say. One of them in particular had a company uh, specifically making technical rock climbing hardware, anchors, bolts, that him and his friends were using developing some, some cliffs in Spain. And I met this fellow up in Canada climbing, and it was the first time I had seen really anchors like this, something outside of regular hangers and bolts. Um, and I immediately was like, wow, this stuff is killer. And I saw an, an opportunity to introduce something that I thought was needed. It wasn't just like another cam or another rope or another hoodad. But it was something that I thought would make a difference, and it was exciting. So I uh, worked with him over a year and a half, and in 93, I started Fix Hardware and started selling hardware to my dad's garage, and um, it's kind of evolved since then. Uh, this information is based on my communication with climbers, developers, land owners, um, the government, you name it, I talk to them on a daily basis. They either call me on the phone, which I honestly prefer at this point. It's a lot of emailing, um, but it, it's all great information. Um, I believe most of it to be very accurate. Um, some, I'm sure some of you have got some more to give me, so please do so. My intention with this is to um, uh, address some, some not issues, but concerns I have in regards to the fact that so many people are climbing now and so much of the hardware out there is old, um, is somewhat dangerous, and um, we take for granted on a daily basis that when we go out to the cliff, this stuff's going to work. And that's what I did, you know, and I grew up climbing in Joshua Tree. And we went climbing every weekend, and if we weren't falling off rock climbs, we weren't climbing. So the amount of falling I was doing was, you know, every weekend I would fall 15 or 20 times, and all my friends would fall. And when we fell, we'd come back down to the ground, and we'd climb until we fell again. And it wasn't until one of these quarter-inch bolts, you know, it didn't break, but it came most of the way out of the hole. And it stopped my friend Rico, but, you know, we got done, and I went to the top and wrapped down, and just took the thing out of the hole with my hands. And we both kind of looked at each other and we're like, wow, this stuff doesn't always work. And um, so that said, that's my intention. So I'm hoping you guys will take the time to watch some of these videos, um, hopefully learn some stuff, hopefully it'll answer some questions. I've been asked many times over the years to do some videos, you know, do some videos, give us more info. And, I've been a little bit tentative just because there's been so much bolting. And to be honest with you, I'm a super traditional climber. I, it's amazing to me that I even got involved with this stuff in the first place. That said, I learned real quick that it was an, a really good opportunity for me to ask some questions of people that were calling on a daily basis, that wanted to experience putting up rock climbs had valid excitement, we're going to do this, I got to ask them some questions, you know, right on, you know, is this private property, is this cool, have you talked to the locals, you know, have you kind of thought through this excitement, because climbing is exciting, and putting up new routes is exciting, and um, I got to talk to people about bolting cracks, and all kinds of stuff, and I realized I had an opportunity um, to just get people to think because once you put these things in, you know, you can kind of take them out, but it's easy to make a big freaking mess and it's easy to cause as much damage as you do good. So uh, without, you know, going any further, I'd like to, to start this kind of series with deciding what type of, what type of material, you know, one should be using when we decide to, um, develop a rock climb, whether it's an existing area or a new area, what type of steel should we be using? You know, should we be using stainless steel? Should we be using plated steel? There's cost factors involved. 
there's strengths involved, you know, there's a lot involved. Um, and at this point, it seems like a lot of it, you know, has to do with money. Um, for whatever reason, climbers, you know, have this concept that spending less is, is more. But, um, uh, so the material we should be using, um, there's a few things, you know, that are going to dictate that for us. And, uh, so the, the first step I've kind of identified here is the type of steel. And there's basically three different types of steel that I believe are currently used. One is a plated steel, which consists of a mild grade steel with usually a zinc type coating. You know, this is a powers bolt, um, formerly raw, and it is a plated steel bolt with a zinc coating. Um, hangers, um, you can find some hangers with a zinc coating. This is a, a fixed hanger. It's a stainless steel hanger. Um, this hanger is also available with the zinc coating as well. Um, the next would be a stainless steel product. Um, again, these gluing bolts are stainless steel. Um, typically, the stainless steel used is 304 uh, stainless steel. Um, this triplex fixed bolt is stainless steel as well. Uh, a uh, 316 stainless is also used. It's a little bit higher quality stainless, quality being less iron, so it's got a, a little bit better um, corrosion resistant properties. That's, that's used in some hardware where you've got either extreme um, weathering, you know, maybe canyoneering, caving, where you're getting a, a lot of moisture, not necessarily salt water, and that type of a corrosion, but just a lot of um, a lot of water in general. And then the last would be titanium, which over the last you know ten or fifteen years has been found to work best um, as a glue in in you know a purely salt water type environment, either where it's uh, a cliff is getting sprayed, or a low tide, high tide situation, or it's a sea cliff. Um, with you know limestone rock and there's seepage and there's minerals in the limestone that are you know uh, affecting and decomposing these steels um, at a really fast rate. So those would kind of be the three types of steel um, that would be we would be dealing with. And I've kind of broken this into some questions to ask oneself. The first question would be you know if you're dealing with an existing area and you want to either replace some bolts or you need to you're going to put up some new routes the question would be um, you know what's what's being used in this area now uh, take a look around chances are you've climbed there and you've got an idea of what kind of bolt and hanger comma they're using um, the next question will be how well is it working you know what's the history of these um, placements you know, are they coming loose a lot? Uh, you know, um, are they needing to be replaced a lot? Um, and really the way you're going to be able to inspect those and really get an idea of what's going on is going to be by removing some of them. It's going to be really difficult, if not impossible to look at, you know, even a plated steel hanger and bolt to, to visually look at what you can see um, and see any corrosion because really the, the corrosion you're really concerned about is the corrosion in the hole. If you look at a bolt like this and you see some corrosion on it on the exterior, you know, you may think that there's an issue inside the hole and that's very valid. If you look at this and there is no con corrosion on it at all, chances are you're going to figure that, you know, the rest of the bolt inside the hole is in great shape. In my experience over the last, you know, Jesus, how long has it been? 30 years of climbing and, and, and a lot of first ascents um, all over the world at this point of all types of climbing. I kind of participate in everything our sport has to offer is uh, that a good portion of the time you may see nothing on the outside and actually inside that hole, there's quite a bit of uh, corrosion going on. And dependent upon the type of anchor you're using, be it a mechanical anchor, um, that corrosion could be an issue. It can be less of an issue. And we'll talk about the different types of anchors later. Um, to stay on track with this, removing a bolt from a hole and actually seeing what's going on in, inside the hole, you know, what condition the actual bolt itself is in, you know, what the thread condition is, things like that. That's going to tell you, you know, the condition of that placement, um, how it's weathering, things like that. 
Um, the age of that placement is also going to help you. If you take this bolt out of the hole, you know, and the bolt's only been in there for three years, you know, or two seasons or whatever, you're going to know right away that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an issue with the type of material being used. Um, let's see. So that inspection process and, and, and gathering that information and asking those questions is going to help. Um, the first ascensionists decide what type of material they should be using. Um, that set of questions obviously was for an existing area. For a new area, it's a little bit different set of questions based on the fact that chances are you've got this cliff and no one's around and no one's bolted it before. One of the beauties about being climbers, especially when we find something new, it like belongs to us and we get to do whatever we want to do with it and we get to have an adventure and that's totally valid. Um, but it's different now than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And I think it's on everybody's best interest at this point um, from a land management standpoint, a safety standpoint, a liability standpoint. And when I talk about liability, you know, we, uh, everybody has, a, has a, a liability here. I take on a huge liability by what I've done over the last 20 years, selling and representing these products. Um, and, you know, that trickles all the way down to the shops. It um, trickles down to the person installing the bolt. You know, it, it's really amazing how our legal system works. And I have first had experience all of a sudden you can find yourself in the middle of a shit storm and, you, I, and it's not even your fault, man. You did nothing wrong. So these are some topics I'm gonna talk about through this series of, of uh, installation videos, placement videos, choice videos, um, these liabilities. And it's in all of our best interest if as climbers on a daily basis, we're taking responsibility for the trash at the crag, the dogs at the crag, the hardware at the crag, the condition of the crag, um, because we all know that more and more climbers are showing up to the crags every year. And all we're hearing about is more and more, not necessarily issues, but awareness. So uh, let's jump back on topic here. Um, for a new area, area, the first thing is gonna be the weathering factor, factors in the area. And you know, we've got climbing across the country. Participation, precipitation, not participation. Precipitation levels, how much rainfall is taking place in a given season, um, snow loads, runoff, cliff orientation, you know, um, how much exposure, sun exposure, things like that. Where you're, bolt where you're bolting, you know, whether it's a limestone cave or a granite slab, you're going to, you know, you're going to see lichen, you're going to see water streaks, all of those are going to give you ideas as to where the water is coming from, how much of it is coming down, and um, you know where you're placing the bolts in conjunction to that information should be part of your decision-making process in regards to am I going to use stainless steel, plated steel, what's, what's appropriate for this given area and this given route. Um, the last and just as important is going to be the rock type. All, you know, we've got many different types of stone we climb on and they all, um, they all weather differently. They all have different compositions and that type of stone is going to play a big part in dis deciding, you know, what type of, uh, what type of material to choose, plated steel, stainless steel. And I'll talk, you know, more about the stone later um, with the, with the exception of sea cliffs, excuse me, in limestones, close to sea cliffs, things like that. Uh, again, when you start dealing with exposure, you know, to spray, um, limestone cliffs that have a lot of seepage, Thailand, Cuba, places like this, that's when realistically we want to be um, using titanium products, glue-in products, things like that. Um, some of these other products, this removable bolt um, is a great tool in getting those glue-ins in position and such, and I'll talk about that later. But, uh, you know, with bolt placing, when you're dealing with those with those sea areas and that salt water and those elements, titanium is definitely um, what should be used at this point. If not, you're going to place stuff and surely down the road, somebody else is going to be taking it out and replacing it again. So, um, 
third to that, and I, I briefly hit on it, is going to be, you've got this new cliff you want to develop, you and your buddies. No one's around there now, but in two years, three years, four years, when you can't help yourself from putting the information out there because you're psyched, you know, people are going to be looking at it. Landowners are going to be looking at it. Your fellow climbers are going to be looking at what you did, how you handled the roots, what you created. So, you know, have a little bit of a game plan and think about that stuff, you know, and think about the cliffs you're climbing at now and what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And uh, without, you know, squalling the fun, give it some thought because I know a lot of my friends, you know, moving up through the, through the nineties and two thousands, they were super psyched and they were putting up a lot of hard roots and they, you know, those guys chipped some holes, those guys did some manufacturing and at the time it was exploding, you know, but in hindsight now that they got kids and wives and they're in a different place, you know, um, some of the younger climbers are like, well, damn dude, you know, you bolted the shit out of this whole cliff. Um, it's a big grid bolted deal like my climbing gym. There's a bolt every 10 feet, you know, uh, there's chip holds, you know, think about what we do with the stone because once it's done, um, people will, um, will have something to say about it. So the decision-making process, um, the plated steel, as I said, it's a traditionally, it's a mild grade steel with the zinc plating. The plating protects, you know, the, uh, the steel underneath, um, the steel is where and what, you know, gives its strength. Um, the plating protects it from the elements. Plated uh, steel has lower strengths than stainless steel is going to. It's uh, more malleable, it's, it's softer, a little bit more flexibility. Um, it's a little bit more forgiving when you're placing it. You don't have to be quite as careful, you know, um, as you do with stainless steel. Um, you can damage threads on bolts and we'll talk about that. But uh, in general, um, plated steel is a great product if it's used in the right environment. Um, the second would be stainless steel. And I believe I talked about the two different types of stainless steel, 304, 316. Um, there's less iron in it, which helps eliminate the rust factor. Um, it is brittler. It's a brittler material. You do have to be more careful with it when you're using it, especially when you're placing it. People have a tendency to use their drill bits too long. They no, have, no longer have a hole that's three eighths inch in, in diameter. They're trying to place these bolts. I'm getting phone calls saying, dude, what's wrong with this bolt? What size is it? Yada, yada, yada. And we start talking about things and it's a super hard stone. And you know, they've drilled 50 holes with their drill bit. And in certain stones, you know, you're, you're not going to get 50 holes. You're going to get 20 holes. So, uh, Stainless steel is, is a little brittler. You gotta be a little bit more careful with it. Um, I think I covered the titanium in regards to, uh, to it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me give you some examples of what I found works really well in certain areas. Not to say that this is the case, but I grew up in Southern California, Joshua Tree. You know, a, a quality stainless, or excuse me, a quality plated steel bolt and hanger works fantastic in Joshua Tree. It's an arid environment. Um, the rock's a little grainy, so size matters. We'll address that down the road. But as far as that type of material, it works good in Josh. Um, the Sierras, you know, a uh, little bit different animal, but for the most part, they're pretty dry. Um, the valley, pretty dry. Plated steel works pretty well unless you're in a water course, things like that. You know, as you start to move into the wetter environments, you know, the Midwest, um, East Coast, things are wetter there. That's where you're gonna use more stainless steel type products. So again, fall back on that. What's going on around me? What's being used in the past? How's it working? And do some inspection. And um, those should be really the factors that are dictating this material versus that material. Not your pocketbook or not your like fun meter, but if you're gonna put these things in and people down the road are gonna expect them to do the job um, that we expect them to do as the first ascensionists, um, uh, we need to make sure we're using the right stuff. Um, I think that takes care of uh, deciding what metals to use. 
with the exception of this. This is an important one, and I've been kind of trying to drive this home for many years now. It's important for us not to mix metals. Traditionally, the hangers that were pumped out were stainless steel hangers. And, um, you know, the bolts that were being used for the most part were plated steel bolts. So we're mixing two metals. And um, there's a process called galvanic corrosion. It's a real process. Um, the short of it is that when you put two metals together like that, they actually start drawing elements from one another. And over time, depending on weathering factors, things like this, they actually start destabilizing one another to a certain degree. That's how it's been explained to me. You know, it's not, I'm not a metallurgist, but I do understand the concept and the principles. And um, that's a real thing. And um, I would employ, your, employ, employ you to do some searching yourself, look into these things, but be knowledgeable with it. And, um, you know, don't mix those metals. If, you're, if you found that a, a plated steel bolt is sufficient for this area that you're going to develop or rebolt, use a plated steel hanger. Use a plated steel anchor with it and be consistent with the metal type. If you've decided, you know, you're in the Northwest or, you know, you're up in Canada and you need to use stainless steel, use stainless steel hangers, use stainless steel anchors. And um, again, we'll discuss all of the anchors. We'll discuss all of the bolts, all of the installation of all of those. And um, I will give you as, as much as I can in regards to, to knowledge. Um, thanks for your time. Um, as always, Fixed Hardware, 760-873-7505. Uh, um, these will be on the website and obviously probably wander around the internet a little bit. My name is Kevin Daniels and I appreciate your time. Thanks.